one for six has it. That's it. We'll look, look at our radar and your forecast. Right now on News Channel 6 at 5, a second suspect has been named in that double murder on Telfair Street, where the investigation stands tonight with a community still on edge. Also ahead, the mayor of Waynesboro taking a leave of absence, his reason for stepping back. Plus, the local food bank joining the effort to get the community vaccinated. How they're helping the homeless as your news starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 5. Everybody, I'm Brad Bean. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with new developments in a double murder investigation in East Augusta. A second person now arrested in connection with a deadly shooting at the Magnolia Court Apartments. And that's where we find News Channel 6 is Chloe Salsameda. She's live there tonight. Chloe's documents released today are giving us a lot of new information about what happened. Yeah, Jenny, there are pages and pages and pages of documents related to this investigation, but this warrant reveals that a second person has been arrested and charged in connection with that shooting that happened in the apartment complex behind me. But the community still doesn't know what went wrong and why two women were killed. Nearly a week after a deadly shooting in East Augusta, questions still linger. That shot in the body is very shocking. If somebody gets shot like this. Documents revealed the Richmond County Sheriff's Office was called to the Magnolia Court apartment complex twice last Thursday. Once for a fight, and an hour later, a deadly shooting. 40-year-old Latoya Oglesby and 26-year-old Deshane Moulton were found dead inside one of the apartments. Moulton's brother, Tyler Prather, arrested and charged with two counts of murder. And on Tuesday, a second person, Julian Mays, also arrested and charged. It's shocking. <laughs> I don't know what to say. The city has been trying to make this area safer for years. You have a lot of mental health here that is not being addressed. You have uh, a huge drug problem here. You got people self-medicated. Just steps from the apartment complex lies the center on East Boundary, a nonprofit that connects people in the community with resources like job training, food, and transportation. They tell me their work has made a difference but they need more support. You have a lot of new people, people moving here, but they all come into these two places right here, along with the ones who live here already. Now the young people, a lot of them are in little gangs. And uh, so now what you do is you put a whole lot of gangs together on the same turf. A vigil is being held tonight for the shooting victims. It's happening tonight at 6.30 at May Park. In East Augusta, Chloe Balsamita, WJBF, News Channel 6. Questions and concerns tonight at 100 degrees. We'll talk more about that in detail and what to expect. Coming up in just a few minutes. This is Jenny Brown. Tim, thank you for that. Now that teenagers can get the COVID vaccine, South Carolina's health department says more than 4 million people are eligible for the shot. 9,000 South Carolinians between the ages of 12 to 15 have gotten their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. State epidemiologist Dr. Linda Bell says she's encouraged by this and says every shot puts the state closer to herd immunity. She's hopeful vaccination rates for this age group continue to rise. It's hard to say what we would have predicted, but what we want to see is a continued and stronger turnout for vaccination in that age group because we, we don't want anyone to forget that getting the vaccine is really the only way to protect yourself reliably and uh, for a longer period of time from those around you who could be spreading the virus. Dr. Bell says they are working with the Department of Education and their partners on teenage outreach. Tomorrow, the East Central Health District is going to have a vaccine clinic in Augusta. It'll be going on at High Point Crossing Apartments on Richmond Hill West Road from 2 till 4 p.m. They'll be giving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to grown-ups, the Pfizer to the adolescents. Golden Harvest Food Bank and AU Health are hosting vaccination clinics for underserved communities. News Channel 6's Mary Calkins has that. When times are tough, there is always a seat at Golden Harvest Master's Table. And today, they're providing more than a meal. Underserved Augusta residents can grab a plate of food, and while they're waiting, get the COVID vaccine from an AU nurse. 
Well, I heard about this through a friend of mine, and I think it's necessary to get vaccinations because COVID-19 is not a thing to play with, and uh, thousands of people have died. And we come here and eat, not all the time, but a lot. And it is, she says, serious. Usually people sign up to get their shot online and drive to a clinic. But Golden Harvest says their approach knocks out barriers for people without transportation or internet access. Every time I go to a place and I ask them, they tell you you got to wait in line and put a, uh, an appointment in. And I didn't have time to they on the ride, so. And she tells me this time it was easy. <laughs> Those who received their first shot Wednesday are scheduled for their second dose in three weeks. That appointment will again be at the master's table. No, I don't need, I don't need to. <laughs> and they're doing another vaccination clinic this Saturday at Thompson Middle School. In Augusta, Mary Coggins, WJBF News Channel 6. Still ahead, a new study that says the coronavirus puts some people at a greater risk of heart disease. Plus, more people on the roads this summer means more chances for a crash. What you need to do to stay safe behind the wheel. WJBF.com. I'm Aiken Bureau Chief Sean Cabbage Stock, WJBF News Channel 6. A family recovering from a crash for nearly a month wants to encourage people to drive safely. Andrew, Deanna, and Kimberly Davis were on Jimmy Dias Parkway and Harper Franklin Avenue when the driver of the car they were in failed to yield at a yellow light. The car was T-boned, hurting the entire family and leaving the husband with traumatic brain injury. Andrew needs more care, and he doesn't have insurance, and we're having such a hard time trying to find him care. Nobody wants to take him because of that. Andrew Davis will require medical treatment for his brain injury, but he's uninsured. The family will hold a fundraiser to help with costs on May 29th. That information's on our website, wjbf.com. A new study out of Emory University is finding black women have a greater risk of getting heart disease. Researchers looked at 10,000 African-American women in higher age groups had higher levels of blood pressure. They also found all age groups had a body mass index of obese, high cholesterol levels and sodium levels, especially the 20 to 60 year old age group. Doctors say the pandemic has disproportionately affected African-American and minority groups and that makes it harder, they say, for them to get access to health care. We found that certain risk factors like elevated blood pressure and obesity are prevalent in young black women. And doctors say heart disease is the number one cause of death for black women in the United States. Cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, chest pain. If you've already had COVID, you're probably wondering, what now? Aika Jachi has more. As more and more people recover from COVID, the CDC has found that even those with mild to moderate disease might be in for more doctor's visits, even after recovering. Turns out, COVID may be harder to shake than we originally thought. A study by the CDC showed that nearly 70% of people who avoided the hospital were unable to avoid the doctor's office in the six months after recovering from COVID. Two-thirds visited for a new illness potentially related to COVID. But some good news, office visits are still better than severe COVID and the risks that accompany it. If you've had COVID and start to experience fatigue, chest or throat pain, shortness of breath or cough, you might have post-COVID symptoms and you're likely not alone. If you do go to the doctor's office, be sure to tell them about your previous recovery from COVID. It could be important. With this Medical Minute, I'm Mike Ajachi. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller has another look at your forecast. Sure does.